What's up guys, Winter Kills here and welcome to episode 18 of the top replays and highlight series where I show off some of the best replays uh, either from my Twitch subs or from recent Twitch streams. Link to my Twitch down in the description below if you want to catch any of this stuff happen live. Um, but one thing I want to mention is that uh, I do apologize if there has been any sort of lack of variety with the decks featured on these replays. Um, like I said, you know, a lot of these replays are from my Twitch stream and I tend to uh, at least for the past few months, uh, test the same deck on stream, just for the sake of practice, testing, and getting in reps with the deck. Um, so if, if there has been some redundancy with the decks, I do apologize for that, but I still hope you guys, regardless, are enjoying the content. And if you are, please be sure to leave a like on this video. And before we go any further, I want to mention if you guys want to help support me and the channel, there are some great ways to do that. A, if you guys are interested in picking up amazing play mats, dice, deck boxes, calculator cases, anything like that, check out Imperium Duelist down in the description below, provider with some amazing TCG accessories, and you can get it all 10% off using that discount code WINNERKILLS10OFF. So highly recommend you guys check them out. And if you guys are buying anything on TCG Player, whether it be some spice from the new Duel Overload set, or Eternity Code, Rise of the Duelist, whatever it may be, or the Battle is a Legend set. If you guys are picking anything up uh, off of there, uh, don't forget to use my affiliate link down in the description below of all my videos. Click that, use it, check out with it. Uh, I'll receive a small bit of kickback from that link, so if you want to help support me just by shopping through TCG Player at no cost to you, that's one way to do it. And also, consider hitting the Join button down below as well. So without further ado here, we have back and forth Mech versus Marin Sess. Of course, I'm playing against Larry. Larry always seems to get a replay in just because the games sometimes end up being pretty decent. And this is this game was really no exception to that. A very back and forth game as the replay title would suggest. Um, I'm playing Pure Mech Knight in this video, of course. Um, mainly because uh, I wanted to sort of get into the deck again. It's been such a long time I've, since I played it. And uh, a friend of mine has recently started playing this deck in real life as well. So it's kind of inspired me to uh, sort of pick the deck back up, get some reps in with it. So I may be uh, of better use to him when trying to bounce ideas off of him for the deck. So, and I, I just love this deck. Peter Mac Knight, hands down, one of my favorite decks of all time. So we're going to go ahead and get into this replay here. Magician Soul starting things off, dumping the medium of the ice barrier to water. I guess it fits in with the rest of the deck. Also a discard target if need be off of that Swat Frog resolving. That's Tang adding a copy of itself going into the Sea Angel. And of course, I'm going to save the Phantasme for right now so I can get the most value out of it. You can see here I pick up a copy of Gamma Seal and Aperia off of that Phantasme. Coming in very, very clutch there to help me dig into some cards. Gamma Seal is going to be very useful in this particular matchup but it's nonetheless still going through the rest of his combo here going to equip and then send off the magician souls they sent the equip monsters because they do count as spells and traps so a little bit of synergy there for those who didn't know why magician souls might be played in this deck that is why allows him to pick up another copy of the field spell and i believe a swap frog he's also sent to the grave most notably a copy of testudo erat newman off of swap frog because it is a level two or lower aqua monster um, and basically, once this card is on the field, it says neither player can special summon monsters with 1,800 more attack. So it's like a, a weaker fossil dino. But this card right here can revive it, and that is sort of the gimmick with his particular build, as you can see right then and there. Now, if this were Master Rule 5, you could have made a totally awesome on top of it. But either way, if here you're getting things started, then I'm going to go right into the battle phase and clear that card before I can go any further. Resolving purple for blue, purple for, or blue for indigo, going into morning star, etc., etc., Gamma Seal right over top of his monster, so that's going to clear a lot of the threat out of the way. And just going to go into the battle phase, clear the field spell so he doesn't have access to it next turn, but unfortunately for me, he drew it off of his Magician Souls. So now, going to play that other copy immediately, and as you can see here, he has a copy of the Prohibit Snake in his hand as well, which is something I did not know he was teching in his current build. Or actually, I don't know if this was his current build at the time, this might have been a different test build uh, based on what he said in chat, but Prohibit Snake, a, a cool main deck tech. From Aaron says, sometimes the deck could possibly have a hard time getting over certain things, and Prohibit Snake definitely helps to deal with those cards. He has the DD Crow for my uh, Secrets target, but luckily I have memory to go along with it. Uh, so a whole bunch of chain links are going to start resolving now. I'm going to negate that blue slug uh, as quickly as possible using that indigo. Luckily the Tang misses. Now he's going to go into battle phase, and I was kind of confused as to why he might do that, but the Prohibit Snake is of course going to remove 
uh, the Avermax, and then he's going to continue on to combo here. Anemone bringing back the Crystal Heart, going into none other than Marbled Rock, and then sort of rounding off this play here with a Swap Frog play, going into Totally Awesome. And now one thing to take into account here is I do have Secrets up. So I have basically the ability at will to turn off this Totally Awesome. And since I have this key set, I can go ahead and grab back that Blue Sky and summon it right to that zone. And he won't be able to respond to it as soon as that card hits that column because there is a Mech Knight in that column. So going to go into a rank 8. Dingirs is going to clear the field spell, swarming the field with some more Mech Knights going into a Morning Star to grab Succession to bring back Purple Nightfall just so I have something that can beat over that Toad. Unfortunately, can't get over that Marbled Rock. But it really doesn't make too big of a difference. Going to search another uh, blue for next turn. Make the new Link Monster here. Um, which is the uh, Lib the World Keymaster. Which we are getting in Dual Overload. Just takes two monsters. And it says, uh, cannot be Link Summon unless you have a World Legacy card in your graveyard. During your main phase, you can set one World Legacy spell trap directly from your deck. But it cannot be activated this turn unless you have a World Legacy monster in your graveyard. So... Um, that, that effect right there is really nice because basically what I just did is set another memory from my deck. And I don't really care that I can't use it this turn anyways. Um, just because I'm using it to set up, you know, the monster and sort of the trap negations that I'll have for next turn by being able to tutor out any mech knight I need for my deck. Now at this point I'm out of, uh, indigos, which is unfortunate, but still nonetheless a very good card to have at this point. I guess like if I still had one, I could have gone for uh, another secrets. I think I still have uh, a secrets in deck. Uh, no, I don't have another secret in deck, so going for this was like the only option. But then it has another effect that says if this card is linked, this link summon card is sent to the graveyard as link material, I can shuffle one card on the field into the deck. Um, so I think this card is a really good, um, could potentially be a decent turn one card to go into. We'll take a bit more resources to get access to it um, because you're going to be needing to like um, still have Morningstar alongside this card and then going into an Avermax because I feel like still Morningstar, hands down, is still a like the better option to go into a turn one and i like this card sort of uh, as a going uh maybe a turn three option because it has that removal effect when you're linking up into things you can remove cards set cards also so that's why i like that card um i think this card is a good one of in the extra deck although you could probably argue you could play multiples um it's just getting that world legacy monster in the graveyard uh, i know there's that world legacy world chalice I've played that in this deck before. That's something I might go back to playing in the future. I'm not entirely sure. Just wanted to give my two cents on that because I know some people will probably be asking. But either way, you'll see I link into the Avermax and then Lib's Effect will bounce that card back. And at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. Like I have Avermax, I have uh, the Secrets, and I have uh, the Memory to sort of block out this one extra monster zone that he's going to try to go to. He summons the, uh, the Tang there to his mistake. He shouldn't have done that because that's sort of going to lock uh, this extra monster zone out. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's just game right then and there. Uh, very grindy game. I wouldn't say super grindy. It's a little bit nice, a back and forth game there. Um, always nice to see those every now and then. So yeah, back and forth between Marincess and Mech Knights. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think your favorite replay is down in the comments section below. I love to read the comments on these types of videos, seeing what you guys, uh, like to see in these types of replays videos. Um, so yeah, this is another, uh, Mech Knight uh, replay here playing against the unga bunga stratagem uh, or the true king dino whichever you prefer to call it as you can see here he's gonna destroy baby he's going to kill the baby that is his objective lithosagem the disaster coming down destroying two earths banishing live the key master and some other goodies here boral sword and thousand eyes restrict which actually does come up later um, but going for needle chief now going into the one and only naturia beast and giant rex and shenanigans here it just does not stop at this point going into appaloosa and a evolves our chief on top of that but luckily i've got gamma seal summoning that purple easily clears that nat beast in main phase two we've got the mind control for the appaloosa so a rather threatening board cleared with a few great going second cards feels goodman going first decks aren't the end all be all even with needle chief in the game now i go for the yellow to try to clear the back row thinking maybe it's a trap but it is a call by the grave Nonetheless, I do lose my indigo, but it's not too big of a deal. I'm going to put up a big, powerful monster as you know, as best I can. The BLS Link already having to use my battle phase to clear the Nat Beast, which is unfortunate. He's going to start doing more Unga Bunga things. Using Misk for four, summoning out another Misk, summoning out Giant Rex, which is at 3,200, by the way. Luckily, I get a word in here edgewise with that Phantasme and uh, able to get some extra pluses, some draws during his turn. And he has that 3,200 Giant Rex, which is actually low-key going to be kind of a problem. 
but I have the memory, which gets me purple, which gets me blue, and I've got double purple coming back in the standby phase, and I'm going to go ahead and grab an indigo with that blue, going for another morning star, morning star, or succession, succession brings back the BLS knight, um, but I can't use the effect to banish giant rex, because it's just going to come back uh, even stronger, so now I'm sort of at the will of whatever he has, I'm just hoping he doesn't have too much at this point, luckily I have the imperm for the OV raptor, which is nice, he does have diagram still, which is going to set up some true king plays, uh, and basically get him into a calamities through way of Lithosagem and Agnamazid. Um, battle phase, trying to clear as much as he can. I'm forced to use one of the purples to grab a blue, and then main phase two, he's going to go right for the VFD, as you might have expected. Top decking of mind control, very, very nice, must be nice. Um, and uh, just going to link into Morningstar and pass, um, because I think I already had to expunge my battle phase earlier on. Gonna drop that turtle on his head, resolve blue for two, and the replay ends there as you can see. Why? Because we're gonna go in for lots of damage, just having a set fossil dig. Probably no targets left in deck, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it feels good to take down the Unga Bunga Might with that of the Pure Mech Knight. I love Pure Mech Knight. Such a great deck. I, I still can say that to this day. And here we have another replay from Saturn going against other than Larry, of course, playing uh, the Mirrorincest deck. You guys getting your Mirrorincest fix, I believe, thanks to him. As you can see, starting off with Souls, dumping Medium the Ice Barrier, and then into Blue Tang, into Slug, classic Mirrorincest combos. Grabbing a copy of Mandarin, though, must be nice off of that Blue Tang going into the Sea Angel. Or, of course, the Field Spell, but there's that Phantasma. He knows he's playing Mirrorincest. He knows he's going to get the opportunity to go ahead and draw three off of it, so he's going to do exactly that. So, looking at our uh, opponent's hand here, or Saturn's hand, um, he's playing the Gren Maju deck. This is one of his favorite decks, I, I would believe. Um, it's a little bit ignorant, but sometimes it ain't it ain't too big of a deal to get a little ignorant uh, with what deck you're playing, especially if you've been playing so much combo uh, and, you know, sort of more intricate decks uh, in the past. Feels nice to mix it up a little bit every now and then. So he has Glyph, he's got Gizmak, he's got Double Desires, and a Super Polynan. So let's see how this plays out. Super Poly discarding, or well, banishing rather, uh, the Gizmek because he is under D-Shifter currently. Both players under D-Shifter. Um, and uh, going for the Duplexer Chimera and swinging with plenty of damage. At this point, he's just waiting for this Ren Maju to hit his hand because there's already, I believe, 18 banished cards at this point. There's the Macro Cosmos. That's going to be pretty devastating for uh, this uh, Marincess deck to try and play through. Phantasma is going to go ahead and negate. Luckily, he's still got some resources in the graveyard, but banishing all those cards feels so, so bad. And is really just waiting game now if he will draw the Gren Manju. There's Golden Castle. He's going to go ahead and discard that off the Phoenix, but a Heavy Storm Duster is going to come in clutch to clear Macro Cosmos. And now Pankratops coming through once there is room for it to clear that Marbled Rock. Top decking that Ronin Toad doesn't feel too good, but... It gets him to Magician Souls with the one for one, drawing him into a blue tang, which is very, very nice. No longer under D Shifter, able to get that uh, blue uh, seahorse, rather, not blue slug, to the grave. Evenly matched, coming in clutch as a nice top deck. Magician Souls just being drawn and set immediately, passing it back. It is just a matter of waiting at this point for that Grand Maju. And it will be a sort of death by a thousand cuts at this point, slowly poking in with 15 and 15. Five cards left in deck at this point. Um, can't even resolve the Gizmak if he wanted to. Drawing into Super Poly, that's good. So that'll allow him to go into Mud Dragon to swing in for 19. But unfortunately, that's all he's able to do. It's really just top deck for top deck at this point. Setting the uh, the blue tank at this point. I don't even know if there's much in the extra deck he can go and do with that. Setting there can be only one and passing it back. Drawing a Dynamiscus, which is very unfortunate. He's going to scoop there, even with having a Canadia and another Dynamiscus, uh, since this card can actually just protect itself um, from being targeted. Um, yeah, you're probably going to target this card or monsters in the field with the same attribute of this card. So uh, it's water. These cards cannot target waters, uh, you know, as is while this card is up on the board. So really unfortunate that this didn't even, didn't even get to Gren Maju yet, but didn't really even need it, I guess. So... That's going to do it for that replay. We'll go ahead and get into some block BA replays now. 
All right, this next replay I want to show you guys is a combo that sort of went south with Block Dragon BA. And what I mean by south is that I wasn't actually able to get into Naturia Beast, but was still able to make a very solid board nonetheless. As you can see, making Naturia Beast against this particular matchup would be an auto win, but we didn't get there. So this is sort of ended up being the compromise. And we'll go ahead and walk through this. So starting with Scrap Recycler, of course. Not only being a starter card, but also being a great extender to see off of Saryush as well to get Gizmak to the grave to have access to Dingirsu much easier. Going into Dante and then resolving that snack to get that Edgemp Sabres to the graveyard to get our first Saryusha. And then going and resolving all of our chain links here. No block dragon access just yet, unfortunately. Using Saryusha to get that CR Kyber on board. Following up with Psychic Tracker. Going immediately into another Saryusha. Still no block dragon at this point so finally getting into enough cards here to get access to a curious we're gonna sort of have to emergency access it with curious instead of going for glow up bulb unfortunately i don't mill it uh and we we get everything else we sort of need though in the process now going for a rank three setup here i've already got the fossil dina in my hand um and as you can see at this point i'm sort of committing for a different type of play I have Block Dragon in my graveyard at this point, and I'm like, I just need to set up a Levier because I've already had to get my Saryuja off of the field in order to make Curious. That's why I really don't like making Curious this late, but sometimes you have to. Uh, and at that point, if you're making Curious that late, it, sometimes it means you're making it with your Saryuja because you need another uh, typing for Curious, which means you're not going to be able to special summon the, the Fossil Dino from your hand through Saryuja, which means you'll need to resort to the Levier. Which is why this card is so so crucial within the extra deck so you do have to make sure you have the resources available to get into a rank three luckily i did now you can see here the last play it really is going for block dragon banishing dina and summoning it off of the levier now this might as well be game either way he's gonna go ahead and play as many spells as he wants here to get as many encounters as he wants for really no reason he can play his scales but at the end of the day he cannot pendulum summon and he still cannot attack this Fossil Dino because of the Avermax, and he cannot destroy by card effects. We're protected from evenly matched and permanence. And next turn, we just start swinging for a game. That does it for that replay. All right, so this next replay is titled Why BA No Die? Because people are always asking why the Burning Abyss monsters don't die mid combo. And that's just really a meme that it really has nothing to do with the replay itself. But as you can see, we're playing against Shadal. Shadal invoked, but he's got that pesky sphere mode in hand. The real true bane existence, bane of the existence of Block Dragon BA, I should say. Um, because we can get Order for Dark Ruler. We have Fossil Dyna for the uh, Super Poly. Um, we are the rest of our board deals with, you know, 99% of everything else. We have Lingaribo for Impermanence and Evenly, but we don't have anything for the Winged Dragon of Ross sphere mode. So let's go ahead and see how this plays out. Getting started with the Sutra Noko goes through at the cost of ditching the tracker, but it doesn't matter. Gallus milling us the glow up bulb is huge there. Going to Cherubini, sending Graf, summoning Seer, and now going for the Snake. It gets hit out of her hand. Who cares? We still get a body on board and we mill three. Milling into an O-Lion feels nice because it gets an additional body for us to work with. Going for Block Dragon here immediately before the first Saryuja, resolving that big four chain links. Would have been five if we had the Gilasaurus to go along, or the uh, Sangan to go along with it. But speaking of Sangan, there it is. We're going to summon it off the Saryuja. I accidentally set my uh, Phoenix Rhino War since I don't believe I even normal summoned yet at this point. So that was a bit of a mistake, but luckily it doesn't even make too big of a difference. Gallus milling a Block Dragon here this time around. Now going for Block Dragon out of Grave with having the Gilasaurus, uh, the Gallus, and the Block Dragon. Going to go for Curious. That's going to go ahead and get us another extender in the form of Imperial Order. Not an extender, but a Floodgate in the situation because this is a Game 2 situation, I believe, where I want to decide in the Order Griffin combo uh, because that's really what comes in Game 2 for me against most decks. So Glow Up Bulb acts as an extender and not as a crucial combo piece. We can use it sparingly whenever we need to. So using it to get Link Fodder, in this case going for Avermax. Now summoning out the Fossil Dyna here, uh, lastly, like we usually do on that Saryuja. Having Imperial Order set, having this card randomly set, which is unfortunate. Um, it is what it is. I would have loved to have that card face up to be able to link off with, but misclicks can happen. So as you can see here, here's his opening hand. I'm going to flip Order in the draw phase, and he's going to go ahead and drop that big chicken on me. That big golden chicken nugget, and I'm going to spin it right back into the deck with the Avermax. 
But he still can't do anything at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, because he has burned his normal summon as a result, which means he will not be able to get over patches to follow. And even if he did have another way to get a monster reward, he would have to perform another normal summon because he can't special summon. And I've got Imperial Order still, which is turning off, you know, a clutch card in his hand, from preventing him from seeing more cards, potentially more outs. Uh, and send have Rhino Warrior still, I can normal the graph without it self-destructing and just swing in with everything else. So yeah, that is going to do it for this week's episode of Top Replays and Highlights. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Let me go ahead and show you guys uh, if I can get to it. Yeah, the current deck list that I have for Block BA. Um, there are some things that I want to try a bit differently within the main. Some simple like main deck changes, like maybe maining one copy of Solkius. Uh, maybe messing around with the ratios of the Gilosaurus, um, messing around with the ratios of like Defrag Dragon, uh, you know, the Psychic Monsters, things like that. Just trying out different numbers with those. Uh, maybe trying out the Dugares and the Exterior with Cyberstein. I haven't tried that yet. I might as well give it a shot and see what it's like, but I, I don't know if I'll like it to begin with. But having that access to stop traps is very, very nice. Uh, and it means we could easily just cut Lingaribo for exterior, but it's just finding space for that Dugares, which will be difficult. Um, here is my current Pure Mech Knight list. Um, I've been testing this the past few nights on stream, um, and it's been sort of up and down as far as results are concerned, but it is YGO Pro meta at the end of the day, so I won't concern myself with it too much. Um, but this is the current list. Um, really not too keen on the main deck's Dark Rulers. Um, those might just be Galaxy Cyclones at the end of the day, but Dark Ruler might be a bit better in the main than Galaxy Cyclone at the moment. Um, since there really isn't too many back row heavy strategies that to worry about people setting too many cards right now, I guess. Um, so it can be dead more often than not. And uh, yeah, that is the pure Mech Knight list, and I guess I'll go ahead and show my uh, Invoke Shadal list as well. Uh, decided to actually drop the allures in places more just, uh, you know, offensive cards. Uh, like Forbidden Chalice to help push into boards more also. So yeah, and I believe also there should be a one of, of the Caddo Shadal in here as well. Uh, because I think playing a one of Light Shadal is fine. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, don't forget to check out Imperium Duelist, my affiliate link to TCG Player. Consider hitting the join button and becoming a member of the channel or subscribing on Twitch if you want to have your replays featured on this video as well. So yeah. That's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you didn't. As always, we're going to kill the sign out. We'll see you guys in the next one.